Today I visit with artist Tammy Dickerson of Belton, Missouri. I'm Rick J, your host, and this is Spotlight on the Arts. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts, coming to you from the Lamy's Building here in Sedalia, Missouri. If you would, join me in welcoming uh, Tammy Dickerson. Thanks for being my guest today, Tammy. It's my pleasure. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, I'm truly excited about getting you into the spotlight today and uh, revealing your skills and your passion uh, and learn as much as we can here, uh, as always, on Spotlight on the Arts. So I guess I should go ahead and, and start asking some questions. This is your first visit to Spotlight on the Arts, I hope there will be more. Uh, I've been looking forward to your interview uh, for the, our first meeting uh, as you did a, a presentation for the Sedalia Visual Arts Association, which I'm uh, honored to talk about every once in a while. They do such a great job. Uh, that's a meeting that you've presented your skills, but today we have a presentation, a workshop that uh, Tammy and the painting crew, should we say, on open air held earlier this morning. And that's gonna be the highlight uh, after recognizing the past and what have you of uh, Tammy Dickerson. So Tammy, if I may call you by your first name, I've been rattling that <laughs> off pretty good. <laughs> I'd like to first ask you if you would share with the viewers a little bit about Tammy Dickerson. Well, I'm Tammy Dickerson and I'm an avid plein air artist. I began um, my first memories of art are before school started, so before kindergarten. Before? Yes, I can remember drawing and painting, and I had unlimited paper and unlimited supplies, and something about the art just really, just really grabbed me. I see. Excellent. So that's basically your first inspiration. Now, getting the people worldwide or local United States, they like to get to know you. Can you give us a little bit of a brief, without getting really personal, about your, your life uh, as it stands or has <laughs> developed over these the past young years? So once I got into grade school and started experiencing art, I guess my first successes with art would be um, when we had competitions, like a first grade contest, a second grade contest, and it seemed that I did really well, and I loved that. Yes. I can remember um, Dad teaching me how to do perspective on his drafting table in the basement. So I learned those angles and those lines um, on a drafting table. I see. Now, so your father was uh, architectural dra draftsman? We had, we had the drafting table. He was a draftsman oh, and then draftsman. later a computer systems analyst. So oh, I see. Uh -huh. Always had, and Mom's got the table now um, in her lower garage and so mom's, I hope to get it sometime. <laughs> oh, oh excellent. Mom's with us today and has helped out uh, so nice to have mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's traveling with me and we're doing a little shopping a little lunching and <laughs> some fun stuff too. And you leave um, Sedalia and you're headed for? Augusta, Missouri. Which is well known for plain air uh, painting uh, activity so that's great now your family uh, I'm married with five children and seven grandchildren with one another grandbaby on the way <laughs> my congratulations <laughs> yes life is the, rich <laughs> yes it is blessed I guess mm -hmm. yes okay well super super well can you in a nutshell Tell us how you was really inspired. If you know Dave Carter, who's known for the um, Mills of Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, he was inspired by a Van Gogh uh, mm -hmm. visit, a uh, gallery visit that was ex exhibiting the Van Goghs. 
And he said the lights just basically went off. And uh, mm. so, but did you have really an inspiring moment where you felt endorsed maybe finally? No, I, I didn't have a moment like that. My inspiration was nature and, and the beauty around me and all things beautiful. So internally, I had this drive to paint, to draw, to pick up charcoals, to pick up all kinds yeah. of mediums. So so this started early in life. Yeah, very oh, early. Excellent. And I, I can't say there was ever an artist specifically or an exhibit that inspired me. I, it was... It was inside of me and it needed to get out. Yes. <laughs> There's something our... about the light. I mean, I have such such strong memories of light coming in our front, um, double windows, and and the way they hit the table, and the way they hit flowers on the table. And you know how you see little dust particles in the air? Yes. Mm -hmm. I remember how that looked and just thinking, yeah, it almost looked like fairies, you know? It was just... Oh, I see, yes. So, so, so the light and the color so, and value was always... So you picked up really more what was going on inside, you picked up, oh, well, it's making sense. Here's light, and mm -hmm. here's uh, atmosphere. And, uh, and what the sunlight constant. does to yes. shapes and surfaces. Well, Tammy, are your arts currently at venues where the viewers may take a look, or are there um, any venues planned that you'll be exhibiting or painting at? And you might explain plain air to those that have not um, uh, Right, or not active in it. Not active yes. in it. And maybe they'll become active after all. Oh, I tell you, plain air is just, it's a whole experience. So when you're in the landscape, feeling the landscape, and then you get to paint it. So anytime I look back at a painting, I remember the light, the temperature, the breeze, the babbling of the water, or birds singing, like this morning. The, yes. all, the, all the bird song was all around us in that lovely garden. and. And it was an amazing experience. I was so excited when we drove up to this Liberty Park and I saw the gazebo and the flowers. I could already, the wheels were turning, the painting was forming in my mind. Oh, yes. And, you and that's such plain air. <laughs> that is plain air. And uh, sometimes it's P, spelled P-L-E-I-N. So don't mm -hmm. be confused with, uh, when you see that word or afraid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Your subject matter, what does that usually consist of? Is it more than just landscapes or plain air? And do you do a sketch first? Uh, and is there a technique you might want to pass on to uh, someone that's now interested in applying these, uh, should we say, skills that they can learn by watching the uh, workshop after the break? So, how would you... So, it, when I first first started doing plein air in the field, I would always do a sketch. And some artists call them thumbnails, and a thumbnail would be, it's about, it's small. Um, it wasn't enough space for me. You could do several and pick your composition, and, and it helps to skip some problems later. So you can really get the right composition before you've applied paint to a whole panel and realized, oh, the gazebo should have been over here or it's too high, or it's too low, it really helps solve some issues. So uh, what I like to use is ink and um, watercolor paper, 100% oh. cotton paper. Uh -huh. But I would do a quick sketch. I could I use a, like a water brush pen to get some grays and really kind of nail down my values before I begin painting. Uh -huh. And I would use a four by six. Oh, yes. So I started doing that so often, um, and people wanted to buy those little sketches. Sure. So I started doing more of them and selling them too. And then a couple years later, started adding watercolor to that. So in the field, I do a lot of ink, ink and watercolor and oils. Those are my favorites in the field. But yes. I'm a daily painter. So uh, that means I finish a painting every day and I've been doing that for nine years and six months now. And that came about, you shared with us at one time, uh, when you first heard about doing a painting in one day, every day, I guess it was somewhat intimidated. Can you share your story on mm -hmm. that, how that began and then now as you spoke? Right, it, it kind of created a monster. Because <laughs> I, <see. laughs> I, I got this, it came to my inbox, it was like an email, 30 day painting challenge. And when I read it, I thought, okay, I had 13 people in the house, all my family was in, you know, I still had five children living in the house, and oh then my. my family, my parents were there, my brother and his family, so 13 people in the house. 
And I thought, that's crazy. Between Christmas and New Year's, I can't, I can't possibly do that. But the challenge started January 1st. So it was a little seed that had been planted and I thought, well, why not? And what why not start it? Yes, and what year was that, may I ask? Oh my goodness, I'd have to go back. Let's see, it's 22, so it was, it was 2013. So nine 2013. years. It's been and nine been, years plus. Uh, do you now try to then paint? Uh, I still do it. Uh, every day. Every day. I paint so every day. I only post one thing a day. A behavioral, should we say? Um, it's a habit. Habit, yes, which yeah. is a good habit, as you'll see in our instructional uh, <laughs> workshop. Uh, well, do you have any favorites that, that you cherish? Um, would you like to share like the basis, or subject matter, or what have you? There's a one that is on your wall or mom's wall. Or yeah, and I left a couple paintings in the car that I brought with me. Curr Secret. You know, currently my favorite. I love being by the water. I love painting by the water anywhere, whether it's a creek, whether it's um, a lake. Waterfalls, love waterfalls. Um, mm -hmm. The ocean, love the ocean. Painting oh, on the sand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I see. Uh -huh. that's, um, but that, that's a favorite. I love landscapes, but I paint in town, too. I'm an urban sketcher. So I'm in, with the Kansas City group and uh, I see. Uh -huh. a chapter. We meet in town somewhere different every day. I've got some other friends that meet once a week on Mondays, and we go paint watercolor somewhere. Always a different place in the Kansas City area. So. Well, Tammy speaks of her busy schedule. I can identify with that also, but now I can see that she is in... And just south of Kansas City, so it'd be so so interesting to paint someplace with a group uh, mm -hmm. every day. Uh, when do you do your wash? I mean, <laughs> yeah, is that, is right. that at midnight? Yeah, <laughs> sometimes after dark. You know, I, I don't uh, normally paint in the dark unless I'm doing nocturnes. So. Oh, I see. <laughs> Throw in the laundry, turn on the dishes, you know. <laughs> I see. You have your schedule. Uh, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, just yesterday, we had all the family out for Father's Day. So. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, that's true. Excellent time to get together for that. Well, you do do commission work? Mm -hmm. I do a lot of commission work. And in fact, in Augusta, I'm delivering some commissions that I, I, I got during the plein air event and uh -huh. then taking a couple large pieces to the gallery there, Gallery Augusta. Uh -huh. Well, can you give us contact information? And I guess that for review, you have a beautiful website. So can you share with the, you. Uh, the viewers uh -huh. how to really take a look at your gift? Uh, so I blog. Part of the whole 30-day uh, challenge was blogging every day. That means you, you paint, then you post it. So I, I already had a blog, but I wasn't using it daily, and I started, um, I started blogging every day. So you'll see my painting. You'll see a little paragraph about what I did. Oh, it, maybe it's technique. Maybe it's the, the elements. Maybe it's the copperheads that were just swimming underneath the bridge I was on. You know? Oh, my, the copperheads. <laughs> could, mm. could be anything. It was fine. It was a lovely place to paint. <laughs> I see. So but how do we... Blog, I was going to say that blog spot is yes. um, Tammy Dickerson and dot blogspot.com excellent and that's they can contact you through that mm -hmm. uh, more information to reach you sure. by email what have you yeah or social media you know or social media Face, facebook it's tammy lynn dickerson and tammy's t-a-m-m-i-e and then um it's tammy dot dickerson on Instagram. Instagram. Uh, they yes. all have slightly different tag. <laughs> right. I enjoy following a, a Tammy on Instagram. Well, is there something that you would like to share with the viewers? This passion you've developed um, into a habit, a good habit, which uh, really reveals some great, fantastic artwork. Uh, can you? Someone needs to be inspired today to pick up the brush or go to a plein air instructional workshop. Mm -hmm. Do you have any words for those people worldwide now, you know? Sure, yeah, um, right. And I talk to people and artists just uh, worldwide. I mean, social media and, the, and the online has just brought the whole world to you. So, and it's taken you to the whole world. Um, I can paint, I tell you, when I started painting most of my um, daily paintings in plein air outdoors, Outdoors in the elements, whether it's zero degrees or whether it's a hundred degrees, my work started to improve. It's just a daily painting. If I have a tiny window, 
I'll paint a little ATC size, which is three and a half by two and a half. It's tiny. You can always squeeze that in. You've got 10 minutes. So I'll do something little. Or if I've got, you know, like these big commission pieces, sure. um, it may take me several days to do them, but I will post them on the last day. Through all of that daily painting, what happens is you get faster at your composition. You get better at your values, better at your, your paint skills, your brushwork. It all happens organically and naturally. It's that brush mileage of working yes, working on right. a painting. It's, it's like, you know, people get injury, injured. Uh, they can't walk for a while, and then the, the, the brain seems to have to be retrained. And I found that the more I paint, the brush strokes automatically come. I, I don't have to work mentally and try to figure out how should I hold the brush for that, or should I do an X stroke here, or what. But it seems like it just, the brain becomes trained. So that's a good, mm -hmm. good point. It's that cell memory, just right. like with sports, you know. It's like a sport, and that's an, your brush is an extension of your hand, and the more you use it, the more the magic happens. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, let's turn, Tammy, to that uh, workshop that was taped earlier today. Hi, welcome today. I'm Tammy Dickerson, and I'm here to start a plein air class. So the first thing we're going to do is find our composition. I've given you all one of these viewfinders. And when we approach a scene, we're going to hold this up in the manner that you want your painting to appear. So when I look at this, I like that gazebo up in the right corner a little bit, the trail of orange lilies bringing you into that painting. So that's what I'm going to sketch by. And if we had time today, we would do an ink sketch, like a thumbnail, of this scene. So what I'm doing now is dropping in um, the pops of, of color. I've blended and softened some of the edges, and now I'm looking at the landscape, and where I really see some magic going on, I'm just, I'm just dropping those in with sharp, quick movements and, and thicker paint. Thicker paint now. This is the time for thicker paint. Thank you. Thank you for joining us in the garden at Liberty Park. Come back again. Well, Tammy, that was a, a great workshop. I enjoyed filming it, and I wish I had brought my paints, but it's hard to actually film and paint at the same time. <laughs> but uh, I sure enjoyed it, and I have got some good footage, uh, which I will have with me for life now, <laughs> <laughs> that no one else will have, except unless they tune in. <laughs> and you'll be able to paint by it that way. Yes, you I can play yes, it, and so you can There's paint a along. method to my madness, as I say. <laughs> So I want to thank you once again for contributing to Spotlight in the Arts. It's been really an educational, informational experience, I'm sure, for everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, ma'am. So, so enjoyable. Well, that wraps up uh, another look at an inspiring artist, Tammy Dickerson from Belton, Missouri. I want to thank you viewers. Uh, for watching. I want to thank Lamy's Building once again for uh, providing such a, a beautiful location here in Sedalia, Missouri uh, to do our uh, Spotlight on the Arts taping when I'm not on the road. So Rick J saying stay healthy and, and safe. See you next time.
This uh, facility doesn't look anything like it did when I first saw it. My very first job was right here making Levi's for the J.A. Laney Manufacturing Company. The uh, people who I worked for uh, were great. It was hard work and it was brutal, but the, the uh, family with, that owned the building were fair and honest and they were great to work for. I worked here seven years. My father worked here 21 years and my mother 10 years. And it was just a great place. I've never regretted it. I started out in the uh, shipping department and I graduated up into the cutting room and worked there spreading cloth for most of that period of time. Well, absolutely, Ginger Swearingen would have been the individual who I remember most. She was involved uh, strongly with my uh, acting opportunities and she was director and producer and she was fun to work for as well. I've known the, the whole family for quite a number of years. Uh, staff and, and John and Ginger and Woody and, and they were all customers in, in our business and uh, they've just done a beautiful job with this. It's just beautiful and the people that I talk to who have been customers here and, and visitors have all enjoyed it a great deal. Um, everyone talks about the, the quality of the food and, and it's just a very entertaining place and I'm looking forward to it. Creative, connection, control. Support the arts and be the change. 24 hours a day, 200 countries. The show must go on. Introducing the world's first exclusive platform for artists and creators of all kinds. The biggest stage on earth. Stream Spotlight on the Arts on Fan For Me. Dot com. Bringing Spotlight on the Arts on GIAJ Global Media OTT Network. Google us or find us on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Apple TV. Hi, I'm Rick J, and I'm Jeffrey Pearl, and we're here to introduce you to GIAJ Global Media OTT Network. Hope you'll tune in. Tune in and watch all these great shows by independent producers, music, and film, and podcast. Roku, Apple TV. Amazon Fire TV and or Google us on GIJ Global Media Network. It's a free download now. Thank you.